Are you a guitar player with a strong opinion about what is a good looking guitar and what is just plain fugly? Well, join us on our journey in appreciating the fugliest of guitars today, right here on Geargasms. Hi kids, welcome to Geargasms. I'm your host, Alan Barnes. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at what's my top 10 of the ugliest production guitars in history. Now, just to be clear, there's all kinds of unique, made to order, ugly things, boutique guitars, bespoke, one of a kind, all kinds of fug out there. We're gonna ignore that category of guitars because it's simply just too broad. Today's list is gonna consist solely of major manufacturer guitars that were at least major releases. They may not have had to been out for 20 years. It may have just been a couple of years. They may not have need sold tens of thousands of units, but it has to be a major company that produced a specific kind of guitar as a main production model, not a custom, for some period of time. If you're new to our channel, please like and subscribe, and we'll get right to the list. Number 10. Now, if you've ever watched one of my top 10 lists before, you know I like to sneak a couple things into that first slot, because often there's more than 10 on my list that I want to cram in there and this video is no different, but we're talking about Wild Audio. Yes, Zach Wild's guitars. He made some ugly guitars while he was with Gibson. I didn't really dislike the Bullseye Les Paul that he played, even though it really wasn't my taste. But at some point, he left Gibson Guitars and decided to form his own company called Wild Audio, and he has made just the most hideously shaped guitars you can possibly imagine with that same graphic on. And the reason I say there's more than one, I couldn't just pick one. So I'll let you look at this one first. It's kind of an SG. It's kind of a nightmare. This one over here, I'm not even sure what you call it. It just makes me want to throw up in my own mouth. And then finally, this beauty. Again, I know it's in the eye of the beholder. I don't know how many of these guitars he's selling. I don't even know if Wild Audio is a viable company at this point. But if it's not, these pictures tell the story. Number nine, the Gibson L6. I'm just going to throw it up here so you can see it. What the hell? It was only produced for a few years in the 70s. I think it may have made some more recent comebacks. But it looks like a slightly chubby cousin of the Les Paul. It's kind of a blob shape. It was a thin body. It had a maple neck. Everything about that guitar was just plain ugly. I don't even know, even though it was the 70s, how in the world did that design ever get past somebody who's a manager in that company and, and they said, wow, let's produce this thing. It was just god awful. Guitar players often give their guitars female names. I'm not sure where that gets started. That's something I've never done. I don't name them either way, but if I own this guitar and I had to give it a name, I would dub the face down ass up. Number eight, it's from the Kiesel Guitar Company. Now, if you're not familiar with them, they used to be Carvin. They had really cool catalogs that came out. They were the first direct or one of the first direct order guitar companies. Supposedly, you could get a much higher end instrument, but they avoided the middleman, the retail monster that stands between us and our prized axes. But since they've rebranded to Kiesel, now to be fair, they often do a lot of things that are custom made to order. So I had a hard time finding a, a single instance. But the guitar I'm gonna show you right here, that's kind of currently what they're doing a lot of. It's headless, which right away puts it on the list. Fan frets, maybe that's for you. Ah, I've never tried one, but they just look <laughs> ugly. So Kiesel makes our list at number eight. Number seven, the Fender Jag Stang. Let me just give you a little taste of it right here. It's supposedly a hybrid of the Jaguar and the Mustang. It was only available for a couple years in the 90s. And even the fact that they were trying to cash in on the untimely death of Kurt Cobain with this model, they just couldn't push him out the door. Want to know why? Use your eyeballs. What an ugly, ugly guitar. Fender usually gets it right. 
they didn't have too many guitars that even qualified for this list, but the Jagstang, god damn. Before I forget, it's t-shirt shout out time. We've got the Beatles Sgt. Pepper on this fine, fine day. The Beatles didn't necessarily play ugly guitars, although you may have your opinion about what Rickenbackers, how they look. But I will say, if guitars are girls, at least two of these Beatles married more than one ugly woman. So I thought it was an appropriate t-shirt to wear for the day. Guitargasm's number of the week, five. Five necks on this ugly Hamer guitar. No, it didn't make our list because it's a one-off, but Rick Nielsen had this made for him. It's currently in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, or at least one version of it is. Just damn ugly. I get the gimmick, but man, oh man. Number six, the Gibson Modern, or the Modern. They put an E on it at the end, trying to make it look sort of European. I'm not sure what this guitar is trying to be. Here it is. What do you think? It, it, I'll give them credit for trying a different kind of shape. It's just damn ugly. It just doesn't really know what it wants to be. It looked like sort of a, a futuristic concept design, but then they put it out in really rootsy type woods like Karina and stuff. I'm not really sure. It seems like the design team went sort of halfway on this instead of being balls to the wall and making it in space age colors. It just ends up looking like a mashup between the Waltons and the Jetsons. It's no bueno. Number five, halfway through the list already, and finally we get to the Ibanez Guitar Company. They've made some ugly guitars over the years, but none more ugly than the Paul Gilbert model. It's an upside down Iceman. It doesn't really look like it knows what it wants to be. I'm a big fan of Paul Gilbert, but even I couldn't rock this ugly beast, even in the privacy of my own room. Number four, I just want to fly. I believe I can fly. I believe I don't ever want to play the Parker Fly. Now, some cool people play the Parker Fly. Mark Farner plays one. He swears by it. I'll have to take his word for it. But damn, 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 it's ugly. It's no surprise that Parker, the guitar company, struggled, and I think they went out of business, and this was the kind of thing that you understand when you see it, why that happened. They were trying to be cutting edge. I give them mad props for being innovative, but this guitar, I just couldn't, and I wouldn't, ever. Number three, while we be flying, how about that reverse flying V? Get some of that up in your orbs there, kids. Is that not an ugly beast? It looks like the kind of topiary pubic hair shaving that gained popularity somewhere in the 80s for just a brief moment, or maybe you saw that thing because you had a Brazilian bikini that favored that shape. I don't know what the hell it is, but it looks like the world's ugliest badge. There are just no redeeming qualities of this guitar. They were trying to be cute. They were trying to be clever. People collect these things. They're still out there. They go for stupid money on reverb. I don't get it. Unless you just have money to throw away and you want something really weird and ugly on your wall, and it's that, that picture of your wife from two weeks ago doesn't get you there, maybe you want to hang that. I don't know. I ain't judging your wife. I ain't never seen her. Are you having fun yet? Because it's time for number two. The Kramer Gorky Park. Oh my lord, get some of that up in you. Why? Maybe it was because there was a Russian band of the same name that Kramer decided to make a tribute guitar for them. Maybe it was the Moscow Music and Peace Festival that went on at the same time is the reason this guitar came out. But it was just the laziest, ugliest design you could ever possibly imagine. Just a triangle. Didn't even try to f with making a V out of it or anything. They just saw that son of a bitch, slapped a neck on it and said, V be done. Maybe it's a tribute to Russia, but if it is, it's a slap in the face. And finally, numero uno. I thought long and hard about this one. And although this one right here is not 
quite as visually ugly as some of the rest. It was probably one of the more successful headless designs, the Steinberger. I knew people that played them. Eddie Van Halen played a striped version for a while. And Gibson just recently revived the Steinberger name and they're making them again. I'm not sure why, but damn, man, when you saw those in the 80s, whether it was the guitar version or the bass version on stage, I just couldn't figure it out. Supposedly, it's a great design. It's much more stable in terms of intonation and tuning, but I don't even care. You cannot be taken seriously playing that guitar. I don't care what your genre of music is. If I paid for a ticket and you whip that thing out, I'm out the door. Steinberger. Thank you for the headless guitar. You, number one on our list. I had a fun time making this list. I hope you enjoyed it. I'd like to hear in the comments what your opinion is. Ugly. If you know of an ugly guitar or you have an ugly guitar, please share your ugly guitar story with us. I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to see pictures. I'd never get tired of looking at ugly guitars. As always, thank you for your time. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Tell a few friends. We're on Instagram as Geargasms. We're on Twitter as Geargasms. On Facebook, as you guessed it, Geargasms. Make sure you join our whack pack community of oddball people that enjoy guitar videos. But whatever you do, I hope to keep seeing you here again week after week on Geargasms.